Ladies and gentlemen, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's NBA 2K22 gameplay news. They finally dropped it. Hey, man, y'all new to the channel. Be sure to subscribe. How could you keep forgetting, dog? Come on, bro. It's like the third time you watched a video of mine, bro. Please. Drop a like, man. I f*** with y'all OD. Let's get into the news. So we've been asking for news for a while. It's like a week away from the game's launch, and they finally dropped it for us. In the form of this gameplay blog dropped by the one and only Mike Wang himself. They also dropped like a gameplay trailer yesterday on YouTube, well, on all the platforms. You might have watched it. It was really just a whole bunch of B-roll of NBA 2 k players that didn't show you much of anything when we said gameplay i think we all meant like 5v5 no cuts not a trailer like gameplay just let the game run let's see how it looks let me see the new animations how everything runs new badges pop up estimated read time 12 minutes lies that shit took a eternity to read god damn so let me save you guys the reading i'm gonna highlight the important points in this gameplay blog so y'all don't have to read you're welcome hey there's a couple times they brought this up and I wanna know why. The first year developing on a new console always brings new challenges. It's like they were trying to remind us throughout the course of this vlog that like, last year was the first year, guys. <laughs> Which is like, yeah, but y'all didn't sell it to us like that. You know what I'm saying? You guys told us it was gonna be great. <laughs> But that was mentioned a couple times throughout this blog. I thought it was funny. Okay, so you're gonna hear the same thing over and over and over again throughout the course of this right here. And it's gonna be two things. It's faster paced gameplay and tighter, more responsive movement. Don't let that fool you. We've heard things like that before. The reason why I like them saying it is because they made a, they understand that it's a thing that people want and that they were working towards it. But to actually see it in action is a whole nother thing. Like they might've worked towards it and we might not see it in the game. Just know that. Cause I've been doing this for a while. I've heard faster paced gameplay, tighter, more responsive movement and more skill based offense. So many times guys, I lost count. That being said, if they did deliver on those three things right there, everybody's dick should be getting hard. I've been saying for a while, the gameplay needs to be more fast paced and needs to be more responsive. The responsiveness really just comes from bad servers just to end latency. I know it's been a while, y'all haven't heard me say latency in a while. They maintain that a lot of the gameplay improvements they made were for both the next gen version of the game and the current gen version of the game. But there were times throughout this article where they said that this thing that we're about to talk about is a next gen exclusive. So it seems like when it was possible, they ported the technology they developed on next gen to current gen, but there were times where that just wasn't possible due to the limitations of current gen. So as you get throughout this, or as you watch this video, you're gonna be like, oh, okay. It might be in my best interest to just try next gen first because it seems like that's where the focus was. So they said that defense, and usually games don't sell because of defense, they sell because of offense. But in this article, they maintain their biggest focus this year was defense and that caught me off guard. The primary goal for defense was to give gamers the tools to be able to change the outcome in the game on the floor. Sound like some gibberish. But the developers say, and I quote, our engineers were determined to achieve those goals and we're extremely happy with the results. Hmm? So we're about to talk about shot contests. For those who've been playing 2K for a while, it has never been fixed. Oh my goodness. Games like NBA 2K19 were so fun to play, but ruined by a horrible shot contest system. And we just have never seen a great shot contest system in NBA 2K history. In NBA 2K21, blinders completely had the game fucking broken. If you were on the side of somebody, it didn't count as a contest whatsoever. There was times where you were directly in front of somebody and it was a ghost contest. NBA 2K is saying they fixed that now. The shot contest rewrite removed the ghost contest that many complained about. And this year, being out of position or not getting a hand in a shooter's face will lead to some easy buckets for the offense. On the other hand, properly crowding shooters with good shot contests will result in plenty of bricks and air balls. They maintain they wanted to make a focus on shot IQ. The people taking good shots are gonna make it, but again, we've heard that before. Hopefully the improvements they attempted to make in the shot contest system actually result in a good shot contest system. And nothing worse than playing some good defense and it says 2% contested. It's like, man, what the fuck? How the hell is that 2%? I'm right in his face. It don't make no sense. So there's been a long standing contest in the NBA 2K community. Some people hate bump steals. Some people love it because it rewards defense. But NBA 2K is saying here, unwanted bump steals and snatch body ups have been reduced in favor of giving both the ball handler and the on ball defender more freedom of movement and respected input. Shifts, launches, stops, and cuts feel much tighter with much new foot gen planting. I'm not falling for 
for that trap? I fell for the foot gen planting trap last year. You don't get me twice, NBA 2K. Hopefully you're telling the truth though. The problem with NBA 2K's responsiveness is not like when you click an animation, it takes long for the animation to trigger and to execute. Although sometimes it does, some animations do take long. I'm telling y'all, it's just a latency from the servers. When you guys play on my career, the game feels way more responsive and tighter than it does when you play on the city, right? That's because once you hop online, the experience just becomes brutally delayed. You click an animation and in like six business days, the animation executes on the fucking screen and it feels like you're playing a 1970s Atari shooter. It's like, damn bro why is the fucking game this unresponsive anyway don't get me started ladies and gentlemen so it's about time that steals has became a priority in nba 2k sphere of things they give a fuck about because nba 2k said in this paragraph here this year people with low steal ratings is gonna get sluggish steal animations and will be punished more people with high steal ratings will not only be able to pick the ball from slashers when they're attacking in the paint but they'll have faster more responsive steal animations and they'll get punish less for stealing man guys i don't know how many times i've had a 40 steal rating with a sharpshooter and been poking the ball from playmakers it's happened for decades dog like it steals has never ever mattered i think there was one year where like lockdowns were overpowered but other players could steal too you didn't have to be a lockdown to click square and get the ball every single time so hopefully this year there's a good reward to cost benefit to clicking the button and attempting a steal if you're spamming it, you need to be punished. If you're clicking it in a good situation and you got a good rating, you need to be rewarded for that. I hopefully 2K commits to that and it actually comes out really, really well. Because as they say later in this blog, it was game tested. They mentioned that a couple times because maybe people like me hop on these videos and say, why is nobody game testing? Not only by 2K players, but by some 2K pros, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, 2K themselves have said that 2K pros have game tested this game. So I'm talking to the pros now. Hopefully y'all gave good feedback and you weren't so all enamored by your opportunity. You didn't give good feedback. Don't ruin it for the rest of us guys. Come on now. So they get they get talking about defensive AI. Now I have a lot of respect for Dazar, who's like the guy who does the AI for 2K. He seems like a genius low key because I would never be able to complete such a role. Like it takes a lot of intellectual capabilities. But the amount of times I've heard they were artificial intelligence improvements to the defense and that switching players and hedging players and rotating and it was gonna be better. And then I hop on my team and I change my settings the way I want them. And the guys just fucking do everything but what I want them to do. It's, it's infinite count guys. And I will hop on my team again and I'll play some play now. And if the AI is still dumb as shit, I'm getting back off. Cause that's actually the main reason why I stopped playing 5v5, uh, like my team play now. It's just that the AI is just infuriating to play with. I feel like I have to use her everybody cause the AI is just not smart enough. But they, they say they made a slew of different changes and this was the biggest change they've ever made to defensive AI ever. That's what they said. A lot of legacy issues were addressed through complete thorough rewrites of almost all major defensive systems in the game. That sounds crazy, right? And, and this goes on for paragraphs. They talk about this, look at this. Like there's so much AI stuff. It's just jargon, jargon, more AI stuff, more AI stuff. Look, the ball handler would have an open lane, which in turn would force the help to come from the strong side, leaving easy open jumpers. This year, our hedge defender can focus on the ball and play two offensive players intelligently covering the deepest threats. Yeah, I see it all in text. Please, I will I'll hop on, guys, and I will put my settings to my liking. And if the AI are still dumb, I will never open up play now again. Uh, so then they begin talking about dribbling, and Mike Wang says he's excited with the new things changing with dribbling this year. He says that next gen and current gen dribbling is the same. Well, a lot, it's basically the same. I don't know if it's identical, but it's a lot of the same. That's what he said. Anytime a 2K dev gets really excited about dribbling, it's not because dribbling is like exciting and fun and skill based. It's usually because it's more realistic, <laughs> which is usually not what the dribblers actually want. But Mike Wang says he made a whole bunch of different changes to dribbling this year. These are some of them. The one-to-one -one basic size ups have been removed and replaced with one-to-one -one signature size ups, which means flicking the pro stick in various directions last year gave you a fairly generic looking size up while holding up on the right stick gave you a nice looking mocap dribble series. This year, the goal was to marry the two together. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the f that means. There are around 50 unique signature size up packages to choose from, each with their own distinct advantages. Additionally, you can equip up to 32 unique dribble sequences, which he's dubbed signature combos. 
Mixing the signature size ups and the signature combos together gives you a limitless variety for how you want to break your defender down. He continues, there's a ton of new combos, cancels, and move chains you can pull off this year. Drag, dribble, his hezzies, and spin step backs being his, he got his personal favorites already. Game hasn't even dropped yet. Hey, all he's trying to say is they've added in a bunch of new moves to the game. 2K has already said that depending on the seasons, 2K is going to have new animations they give to people who level up in the game. So there's going to be seasonal exclusive animations we don't know how effective those animations are going to be neither but then he refers back to the main point he wanted to get to which is when it comes to dribbling you'll notice significantly faster pace and tighter control there's also a few WNBA dribble styles they added from these WNBA athletes right here Mike Wang also acknowledged that last year taller players could outpace shorter players with the same speed with ball rating this has been resolved for NBA 2K22 to ensure that smaller players are no longer lagging behind. So all, all of that to say a lot has changed. I don't think dribblers are gonna be happy about it, but who knows, maybe for the first time, a dev is excited about dribbling and the dribbling community loves the changes. I've never seen it happen in my personal opinion, but you don't know, it's second year on the next generation hardware, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I, I'm not a dribbler. I'm gonna tune in to the dribblers. Uh, Steezo, let's see what Steezo can do. Apparently G-Man's about to come back. <laughs> that threw me for a twist. He, he called me the other day. I said, G-Man, you're alive? <laughs> what the f So I'm gonna tune in, see what's going on with dribbling. I'm gonna ask questions from the people who might know. And, and y'all will be in tune too, ladies and gentlemen. When you don't know, you have to ask questions, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you know. Hey, first of all, the news has been spectacular so far. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel. I know you're watching this video and you still haven't done it. And you know I reminded you in the beginning of the video, you still haven't done it. It's crazy. It's the fourth time they've reminded you. It's fine, you don't have to. So they get into post play. Now, I wanna give you guys a preface. I don't know how many of y'all been playing since 2K15. In 2K15, post play was at its peak. I swear to God, if you had Dirk Nowitzki, and you knew what you were doing in the post, you would never miss. If you missed, it was on you. It, they had post badges that helped you do post fades. It was unbelievable how effective the post game was. I would say it was overpowered. I took full advantage of it though on my team when I play against friends, I had Dirk Nowitzki on all my teams. Ever since then, it seems the 2K developers have been afraid of making post play too effective. And so it's just been like a shell of what it used to be in 2K15 because it was truly unstoppable. But they maintain that they added a whole bunch of new, a suite of different features that's gonna make the post play more fun and skill based and this is what they said similar to face up ball handling many of the new moves are cancels and aborts which is actually more exciting than you think like the idea of like doing a post spin canceling that and then spinning this way and shooting that way is like dope like it adds a whole new dynamic so once you do a post animation you can cancel it whenever you want to and you can string it with whatever other animation and i'm not gonna lie to you the chances that 2K allowing cancels and aborts and dribbling and post play. There's gonna be some kind of crazy dribble glitches here. There just has to be, because there's no way they're allowing cancels and aborts and people don't find like an overpowered string. It's not gonna happen. There are also new RT, R2 fakes that keep you engaged in the post, allowing you to chain multiple fakes together without disengaging. There's also new disengage face-up moves, controls to help you avoid steals, new hop shots, fades, hooks, and a better pull chair mechanic. Um, yeah, we've heard post news like a lot in, in the history of 2K. This is one of the more exciting things I've heard. So if you are like a post player, you hear things like this and you think like, hopefully it's a lot of different shots, fades and hooks. But also the cancels and the boards gets your dick card a little bit because you don't know what you could string that with. So hopefully there is as many opportunities as they're making it seem in this blog here. But again, I wouldn't get your hopes too high. So then they get to the most exciting thing. The most controversial part of really any 2K is the shooting. And, and they say a few things. One, they have a new shot meter. They say the shot meter is gonna get smaller when it's a worse shot and larger when it's a better shot. They say fatigue also plays a role in whether or not it is a worse or better shot. So when your shot meter is massive, it means the chances you hit that shot is higher. Shot timing still plays a major role in the skill gap. And yes, you still get an additional boost for turning the meter off. But then they finish it off with this, which I thought was hilarious. It was almost as if them like saying like, yo, they just co-signed us. We've heavily focus group tested the new shooting mechanics with players of all skill levels and believe this is the best shooting has ever felt in any NBA 2K. So we're gonna have to see about that, right? Well, I'm gonna tune in, I'm gonna let y'all know. <laughs> 
Man, the amount of times I've heard something to this nature and things of that nature is, it, it, man, it goes for years and years. But, you know, sometimes they tell the truth, sometimes they're just gassing it. You don't know. They're trying to sell you a game at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? If I was trying to sell you on a subscription button, I'd tell you how, like, it was so easy to click and it's satisfying to click and it's a big, juicy red button and it makes an animation when you click it and you tap it with your finger and it takes a half a second. So I'd tell you all the things you'd want in here so you click the button, you feel me? So that's just what they're doing here. Uh, finishing doesn't always get much spotlight, but they gave it its own section here and they said they wanted to add a skills gap to finishing at the rim, which is kind of controversial. Because in the past, when 2K added a shot meter and people was missing layups because they were timing them horribly, people were furious that their horribly timed layups were missing. So the casual community should hate what the f was just said in this first sentence. But personally me, as a person that doesn't like the fact that slashes can just click square and get these pre-made animations. As beautiful as our motion capture dunks are, it was a shame that once you saw one fire off, you basically knew it was an automatic two points. There's a new revamped blocking system we're giving to rim protectors more tools to make great stops at the rim. On top of that, on new gen, mm -hmm, new gen exclusive alert, we've added timing meters to both alley-oop and aggressive skill dunk attempts. So they say when you get thrown an alley-oop, you have to actually click square and time it properly to be able to put it down. And they have this new feature called aggressive skill dunk, which at any point you can activate. And it's basically like when you want to on somebody, but they're saying there's some skill to being able to pull it off. We're gonna get to it in a moment, but there's also some new badges that help give you more gas to be able to pull off these aggressive skill dunks. Honestly, the ability to try and trigger a wavy dunk and then up if it's not good circumstances for you is kind of dope to me. Hopefully this feature looks as good in game as it looks in my head here. 2K also says you can force bounce pass alley-oops this year, so that's dope. And holding sprint and pulling straight down on the pro stick will trigger the aggressive skill dunks. Using the aggressive skill dunks feature will basically force a dunk attempt on demand as long as you have a strong dunker and you have a bit of runway. They also added dunk celebrations this year, which is long awaited because they had celebrations for basically every other exciting thing in basketball, but finally now there's dunk celebrations. And they also say there's a new thing called the dunk style creator where you can customize your dunk repertoire. So you won't ever do a dunk that's not in your dunk style thing. So, I mean, for what, I don't know what that means we're gonna have to actually look at it it's just a bunch of words right now i want to see it visually hopefully we can see some footage of that at some point hmm, maybe a trailer but then they get to the really really juicy stuff which is builds badges and takeover and a lot has changed in that department too look they say it again as with any new big developments there's always growing pains <laughs> All right, we get it, 2K. Last year was the first year on a new generation. Stop with the reminders. We, I know at least, maybe not everybody knows. No, actually, everybody knows it was the first year on a new generation. It was still no excuse for dropping that unfinished product of NBA 2K21. No excuse. NBA 2K starts off by saying they increased the amount of badge points you have this year. You might be wondering why would they do that? That's because they added a whole bunch of badges and they want to make sure you have enough points to be able to utilize some of the new ones too. Another cool addition is the ability to create badge loadouts. A long awaited feature, 2K finally said yes, we'll give it to you. So if you have like your Pro-Am badges set up, but you wanna hop on the city now, you could switch up to your new city badge loadout. You won't have to spend five minutes like reducing and increasing different badge points. 2K, thank you. It's small, like, this is a quality of life change. People that, like, play the game love the small stuff like this. You just save people, like, five minutes out their time every time they want to switch, right? Man, it's small shit like this that gets me excited. It's not so much, like, the big crazy talk because most of the time they promise you something, it don't really come out anyway, right? But a badge loadout is just, like, a great feature all around. I'm glad they added that. But then they get to talking about some of the new badges and they give some descriptions. Fast Twitch, ability to get off the floor quicker for standing layups and dunks. That seems fucking useless. Grace Under Pressure, ability to convert standing layups more effectively. Limitless Takeoff, ability to soar from further away on driving dunk attempts. Mouse in the House, ability for bigs to finish over shorter players more efficiently. I swear to God, anybody equipped this badge, I'm looking at you differently. I swear to God, I'm looking at you differently if you equip this badge. Unstrippable, the ability to secure the ball better when gathering for a layup or a dunk in traffic. Chef, the ability to knock down Steph-like dribble deep threes. Limitless spot-up, ability to hit logo range threes off a catch and shoot. 
Lucky sevens boost your ability to score when you're shooting early in the shot clock. Mismatch expert your ability to successfully shoot over taller defenders on a switch. Interesting. I don't know if on a switch is specific to the badge. Can you just shoot over taller defenders at any time or does it have to be on a switch? Like what if it was a turnover, there was no switch, you just picking up whoever has ball and now there's a mismatch. Uh, I would like some clarification on that one because that could make this badge like very useful or very useless. Glue hands the ability to make difficult catches quicker branch. <laughs> you man, we have wide receivers out there now. We're gonna have Tom Brady and goddamn Edelman on the court one on one. Hey, I don't like people throwing full court passes, so I don't know how much I'm gonna like this badge right here. Hyperdrive boosts the speed and effectiveness of moving dribble moves. Quick chain boosts the ability to quickly chain dribble moves together. God damn, there's a lot of badges. Post playmaker, triple threat juke, ball stripper, hustler, which is a badge they removed in previous 2Ks and brought back. But probably the most interesting badge on this whole list, ladies and gentlemen, Menace significantly drops the offensive ratings of opponents when you smother them. Because smothering them should already significantly significantly drop their offensive ratings. So this might be like an overpowered badge because it applies in too many situations, or it could be a very useless badge because you're already reducing some, so we'll see. We'll see about Menace. That's also a crazy thing to name a badge. Like, yo, you got Menace on Hall of Fame? <laughs> That's about to be a meme. <laughs> it's gonna be a meme. Y'all can see that on a meme video expeditiously. That will bring the total badge count to 80. And as 2K says, that's the reason why they added a whole bunch of new badge points. They said like the visuals for adding badges this year looks totally different too, and it should make it easier for you to see everything and a lot your different badges. And this is all in an effort to kind of give you more RPG vibe because if you remember, at least on the next gen version of the game, 2K is committing to this like whole RPG 2K. And I'm committed to seeing if they're gonna fuck it up or if they're gonna body it because RPG when done correctly is addicting. So new seasons, new RPG, no generic my career. I'm excited to see what 2K puts together. Am I getting excited? Agent, calm down. I'm not letting 2K get me excited this year. I can't, they're gonna destroy me and I'm gonna be heartbroken when the game is ass so I'm gonna reduce my expectations to down here and assume that only 15% of the things they said right here is gonna come into effect and that way no matter what happens they met my criteria at least if it's at the bottom uh, they also mentioned this new thing that's exclusive to next gen called takeover perks and that's modifiers you can unlock to equip and strengthen your existing takeover abilities and he said he's not gonna list them out because he wants to surprise you Mike Wang is a freaky guy he wants to surprise you so we'll see what those look like also fantastic idea hopefully it doesn't like throw off the balance in games like nba live it had modifiers in like the dunk contest before when done correctly modifiers add like a whole new world of customization to something that you've known for a while like dunking has existed in video games for a while adding modifiers to dunks in a dunk contest change the game. So hopefully the takeover modifiers does the same thing over here. And on the closing remarks, they basically reiterated that it was so hard for them to do what they did, that, that last year was their first year and that it's gonna get so much better this year. And, and this part was my favorite, guys, read this. In fact, we had the wonderful opportunity to bring in several respected community members, I wonder who those were, and 2K pros to beta test gameplay. So I don't know who the respected community members were, but the 2K pros, hey, y'all are the tryhards of all tryhards. Y'all play this shit day and night. Don't f up, right? You guys had an opportunity to destroy the game and tell them what was wrong with the game. I know y'all probably didn't have too much time, but now y'all, 2K has said y'all co-sign the gameplay. If it is unbalanced, y'all gonna look crazy. I'm just letting you know how it works. One time, Annoying went to the 2K plays and went like, yeah, it was pretty good. And then when it wasn't pretty good, like the whole community was like, what the hell, man? You said it was pretty good. <laughs> so now you've got the 2K Pro co-sign over here. And then they, at the bottom, they linked the reveal trailer they dropped the day before. Damn, it only has 70,000 views. What are the comments saying? Uh, I don't see enough sweat. The game is exactly the same. I want to see actual gameplay, not a trailer. So about the same shit we've been saying. Hey, when 2K, when people say they want to see gameplay, they don't mean this. I don't know if 2K knows that. Like, they don't mean this right here. <sighs> so this was the gameplay trailer they dropped yesterday. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because it's not really much of anything. 2K, when we say, like, gameplay, I get, like, you say trailer features gameplay, and this is, like, from the actual game. I'm certain of it. But, like, this is not what we meant. Is there 4K? Yeah, there is. Let's watch in 4K. Because the game looks graphically appealing. That's all this would have really told us. Maybe we can spot some new animations. But when, when we see, like, straight gameplay, unedited, no zooms, no this and that, and, you know, 
this is cinematic. We just want something raw, because then we could see a lot about the game. Like we could see some contact animations in real time. Trailers are designed to make things look good. We kind of just want to see things for what it is because we've been through this before. I'm not saying don't drop a gameplay trailer, but if you was gonna drop this, you should have dropped this like a month ago when it would have been like, oh, okay, we're like a month in and a bit away from 2K's launch. We got it, we got ourselves a gameplay trailer. Hopefully in the next few days, we can receive some actual gameplay. But anyway, through the course of all this gameplay, it's a whole bunch of animations we've seen before. Obviously the game looks graphically appealing. That's the second time somebody went into the stands. I don't know if that's like a new thing they're trying to emphasize. There's some like park dunks they added into the game. I don't know how y'all people need. The game looks fucking spectacular, guys. Like I'm watching this in 4K on a 4K monitor and it looks glorious. Like the game has always looked visually appealing, but that's not why we want to see gameplay. Anyway, for what it's worth, it was a very pointless trailer, which is why some people wasn't with it. But I'm glad we're finally starting to see something. I guess if you had to be positive. Someone said, put Melo's freaking braids in the game. It's been a year since he had them. <laughs> oh man, look at Power always breaking it down on, on Twitter. The new shot meter system looks pretty cool, but too bad I'm gonna be using no meter the entire year regardless. All right, let's take a look. This is from the trailer. Excuse the bad quality, this is from Twitter. Where the fuck is this footage from? What the fuck? Hello? Wow, look at this new shot. I know the whole quality is horrible. Excuse the quality. This is Twitter. God damn. That shot meter is long as shit. And that's contested. That's a big ass shot meter for a contested shot. Yo, Power, where did you receive that? So usually when like gameplay news is dropped, that's when like Mike Wang, that's why Power right now is saying, so Baluba, you can resume tweeting now. Tell us something. Because Mike Wang usually just hops on and like starts like telling us about more stuff, like in detail stuff that like maybe not everybody cares about, but like some people might care about the small stuff. Like y'all notice how the thing I got most excited about was badge loadouts? That's because when you play the game, it just saves you time. So small stuff like that, that just makes the game just more fun to play. Oh, you know what I think this is? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. I think I figured it out. So NBA 2K put out this post. Let me find this real quick. Quote tweeting a new program they have called Introducing Next Makers. We're looking for creators worldwide to partner with on these two random games in NBA 2K. Let's connect. You get dev access, exclusive info, affiliate opportunities, hype you, and more. Uh, I think that's what this is, if I had to guess. Because otherwise, why would... This looks too organized, my brothers. Like, everybody posted four minutes ago exactly. Hmm? I'm not a part of any program, ladies and gentlemen. The reason why I make these videos, should I say, is because I love gaming, bro, and I love talking about gaming. This channel was created originally just to talk about GTA 5 because I was so excited for the game. And when the game came out, I talked about it more and I played the game and I showed the game. Like I tried to get on top leaderboards of the game and all of that. I did that for so many games because I love this. My fear is, and there have been attempts made previously, that me partnering with the publisher might interfere with my ability to just say what the fuck is on my mind. If I think something, like I've thought plenty of things throughout this video, like if I tell y'all like they're saying it in the in the blog post, but who knows if they're gonna do it. I might, like I don't wanna be censored or feel like I can't say whatever I want to say on my channel. So if y'all ever wondered, Agent, why don't you join the program? I know a bunch of people added me, Agent, are you gonna join the program? I don't know what that means for what I can and can't say on this channel, no clue. A couple years ago, EA invited me out to an event because NBA Live 19 was gonna come out and I, I saw what they showed me, I came back and I said pros and cons. EA has not invited me out to another event, ladies and gentlemen. And that's fine. I haven't been invited to the last couple NBA 2K events for whatever reason. At the end of the day, having access and exclusive this and that is fantastic. But if that comes at the cost of me being able to do the reason why I started this, then it is kind of... What's the word when you work against yourself? Counterproductive. It's counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. Hey man, it seems like the floodgates have opened. We don't know when Mike Ryan's gonna hop on Twitter and talk gameplay or when they're gonna release more information about the game. We have no clue. But every single time some juicy information drops, y'all know I got you covered, man. Drop a like. Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate y'all as always, man. And I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one. Hey, catch up on this news if y'all missed it. There's so much news you're missing out on right now, ladies and gentlemen. Catch up on this one, man. And and uh, I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Peace.